Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax, and today we are talking about the venerable Technics 1200 and 1210 turntables and a bit of an epidemic that's going on as parts and replacement bits have become harder to get. Now, to do that, I'm talking to a guy called Jay who runs a channel and website called Just Technics. Please do go and give him a subscribe. We've put the link down below so you can check out his videos where he goes into a lot more detail but I wanted to highlight this here on our channel just to kind of spread the awareness of what is going on in the used turntable market right now. One more bit of housekeeping before I introduce Jay and we get started is that I'm British. I've said Technics my whole life. Jay does the same. Now, I know the official pronunciation is Techniques, but I'm too old to change how I say it now. So Technics it is for the duration of this video. Let's get to it. Now, I know from dealing with these turntables for many, many years now, that is not a Mark V board. That is either an M3D board or a newer Mark II board. So, Jay, thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about your business, about your history, about what you do at Just Technics. Right, okay. So, literally, I bring these back to life is pretty much it. So, what you see in front of you here is an end result of well, this one pair that I finished last week um, came into me, corroded, water damaged, all sorts of bits and bobs done with them, and I needed a bit of love. I mean, the majority of these turntables have never been touched. The amount of customers that I speak to who have never even oiled the spindles on these is just shocking. And yeah, I spend the majority of my time repairing other people's work, being quite honest, um, servicing, repairing, and customising Technics 1200 and 1210s. I've been doing it for years. This is what I do. And yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much that. So the, the thing is to set the scene for people, right? The original Mark IIs and Mark Vs and everything else, they were discontinued now over a decade ago. Yep. The, so it's, it's been a long time since they've been available brand new. You probably could find a brand new pair in the box somewhere in some like warehouse in Japan if you had a lot of money to spend. But in general, new 1200s and 1210s, they're, they're gone from that era, right? There are no more. Yep. When did the parts supply start to kind of dry up with them, in your experience? It's all the time. I mean, look, they still, you're right, they stopped making them in 2010. You could still buy them new, because most suppliers still had them, is the truth of it. Then, obviously, when they started going, parts were still available. So they don't just, disc as you probably know, they might discontinue the item, but the parts will still be readily available for you to buy. Because if you bought a pair in 2010, and then for some strange reason, your pitch goes, your motor goes, your, your main, main board needs repair or something. You need to buy components from replacement parts, genuine parts, ideally. So they wouldn't just got rid of them straight away. Now, over the last five years, especially with, with me doing this, so I've been doing this for years, but five years in self-employed, just touching these turntables. Mm -hmm. um, every other month, there's been something dropping off. I mean, pitch controls are pretty much now non-existent as of now. Mark II pitch controls, unless you know a main supplier, a Panasonic engineer that's lucky enough to have these brand new and box on the shelf, you're not getting them brand new, genuine from anywhere. Um, at the moment, you could just about buy Mark V sliders online, genuine. Once they're gone, they're gone, and you've got to buy aftermarket units. The majority of parts now on these turntables, over the last five years, everything inside them is aftermarket. Things like resistors, capacitors, even the tactile switches for your 33 and your 45s. Everything that goes into these decks now, nine times out of 10, is aftermarket or a better, an upgraded component, I'll say. So you'll have things like diodes and resistors that in older turntables would have actually been better and last longer than the newer end of the spectrum in 2010. So the Mark V, for an example, there's two or three components on that board that cost peanuts to repair, but the components are of a lower quality than the older units. So you'll find that the newer ones actually fail quicker than what the older units do. Right. So to upgrade these components now, I mean, look, buying a strip of resistance for it, just to give you an idea, a pound, not even that, to buy three, 400 of them. And these are going to be much better quality than what was already inside the turntable in the first place. So right. if you know what you're okay. looking at, then obviously you yeah. go through the schematics, you write down what you need, you get them ordered, done. But parts have been going, the last five years, everything's been dropping off. And this is where this is where it's been getting very hard for a lot of people now in very similar industry as what I do. 
The other thing to watch out for, when the platter is on the deck and you spin it round, you should have a hole for the brake adjustment because the Mark V's allow you to physically adjust the brake adjustment without actually removing anything. This isn't on here neither, on both covers. There's usually a little cutout, a little round cutout, and it says brake. This is not a Mark V plastic cover for underneath the platter. Okay, so fundamentally though, they can still be repaired. They can still be maintained, even though it might not be now with original parts, you can do it, right? But of course, yeah, but of course with scarcity and rarity goes rising prices, and also goes scammers and we start to see people with slightly dodgy motives coming in now i've watched your two most recent videos and i found them absolutely fascinating because it, the title of this video is going to be you know fake techniques exposed or whatever but they're not actually like there's not some company in china knocking out you know knock off 1200 what you're talking about you, your term is the franken deck so can you tell us about these franken decks when they started to appear, and, and is it something you're you're finding as more of a problem? What is a Franken deck? Right, so it's, to keep it short and sweet, a Franken deck is a mixture of different models of these turntables all slammed together. So if, say for an example, you buy a pair of Mark Fives. You don't know, you haven't seen them, but you bought them on eBay, you bought them on a selling site, anywhere online. You bought them as Mark Fives. You get them, warranty stickers on the backs, um, you know, you'd have things like respray top of platters to the wrong edges. You'll have different shades of color. You'll have graphics that are incorrect, fonts that look completely different, aftermarket pitch trims. But the reason they could also be really bad is you can have different internal components, which you would never even know. So you may have a Mark II board inside your turntable and not a Mark V or an older Mark II power supply that doesn't go with what it should be inside. You may have an arm assembly from a Mark II inside a Mark V. And it goes the other way around as well. You could buy a pair of Mark IIs that aren't actually Mark IIs. They have Mark V boards. And in that respect, that's not a bad thing. But when it's the other way around, if you're buying something as a genuine unit that has not been tampered with, that's meant to be in original condition, and it's been resprayed, you don't know whether that clip, if it's a Mark V, for an example, whether that clip's been used on an M3D or maybe from a Mark V. But you find that rubber bases can be interchanged from all of these turntables. Pitch controls can be interchanged. Arms can be interchanged. Internal parts are. And you really do not know what you're getting now. So you could buy a pair of Mark Vs. They genuinely could be M3Ds. Or they could be Mark II internals in Mark V plimps. You just don't know. But the anti-skate on, on a Mark V should go up to plus six. These go up to plus three. So that's the wrong anti-skate on both turntables. So this tells me that either he's replaced the caps or these arms are from a different set of decks, probably from a pair of Mark IIs. Now I'm gonna probably put it out there and say that I'm pretty confident that these arm assemblies have actually just been unscrewed from a pair of Mark IIs and popped on. That was the interesting one in your video. You had this pair that had come in as, and they were supposed to be basically stock Mark Vs, right? And they were a mixture of, of different parts. So you had one was an M3D body and one was a Mark V. One had a Mark II board and everything else. What what are the potential kind of downsides in terms of technical, you know, technicalities? What could this, is this dangerous or is it just kind of bad? It's not a, it's not a dangerous thing. It's more to the fact of you're paying top money. I mean, if you want to buy a pair of Mark Vs, you go on eBay now, you can't find them anywhere. And if you're buying a pair, it's all well, all well and good at having something that's inside in front of two boxes. They say they're genuine units that come with them and they're a matching pair. If, you, if you're a young guy and you've never owned Technics before, then how are you going to know what you're looking at? So if you, you're taking it, you're putting your trust in the seller that you're buying these from, and these are meant to be Mark Fives, you're paying them over 15, 1800, 2000 pounds per pair of decks. You get them, don't know any different, and use them. It's usually only when people send them out for a service or something goes wrong with them and they have to give them to another company to get things repaired that when they get contacted to say, I'm really sorry, these are not genuine. So it's not a dangerous thing. It's just a very snide, cheeky way of people selling things to make money. Having a Mark II board inside a Mark V doesn't really make a difference, Chris. I mean, you can have a Mark V board inside a Mark II. 
You can put a Mark, yeah. Mark II board inside a Mark V. You can even put a Mark V board or Mark II board inside an M5G, as long as you modify the connectors and do a bit of jiggery pokery inside the main board. They're all yeah. fundamentally the same components. So I use my, my most common thing that I usually get asked is, what model is better between a Mark II, an M3D, or a Mark V? They, they, they all share exactly the same boards and components. It's how it's controlled. So M5G with digitally controlled pitch. Obviously, a lot of DJs struggle with the digitally controlled pitch. I go on about it all the time. Whereas the older series with the analog control is going to be much easier to cope with. So Mark II, M3D, and Mark V in the analog series, in reality, the pitches, there isn't really any difference with them apart from things like dead spots, for an example, the physical continuous range between the pitch, the way it's calibrated. But there's no danger in, in this. It's just, in my eyes, if I'm say, if I was selling a pair of, if I was selling this deck here as a Mark II, I'd be open and honest and say, look, it's a 1210 Mark II. It's been vinyl wrapped. It's been fully serviced. The arm's been rebuilt. Bearings have been rebuilt on this one and replaced. New arm, new cables, new power cable. And be dead honest about this. If you'll buy, I'm selling this, and this plimp was originally a 1200, and it's not from this turntable, you're never going to know, but the person that sells it will know. And this is starting to yeah. become a very regular occurrence. It's been going on for years, to be honest with you. It's been going on for years, and it was just the time had come on my last two videos that I thought, enough is enough. We've got to start outing, not outing the companies, but you know, by putting it out there, people to be warned, especially with this whole pandemic situation you know as well as i do technics prices have just gone through the roof i mean buying a yeah, pair of technics in good condition now you if you're very lucky i mean minimum price i see a pair for now 1200 pounds you know usual going price 12 1300 pounds for a pair in good condition but you don't know who serviced them you don't know the life of them really you know you've got to be very very careful platter this one has been sprayed all the way up to the edge. Now you will know if you know your techniques that this lip area here is actually meant to be polished all the way across. Usually you have a sticker on the platter as well. These have been resprayed all the way up to the edge. So that's one thing that you need to look out for. Okay, so, so the question is then, if we want to be careful, right, as someone who deals with this stuff all the time, let's say I'm going to buy a set. Okay, I, I'm, I'm doing it locally so I can see them. What would you suggest that, do we need to be taking a screwdriver and popping off like the cover plate underneath and stuff? Because obviously you can't fully open up a 1200. There's like 50 screws on the base, right? But you can have a look inside that top section. Is there is there specific kind of warning signs we should be looking for when we're buying used Technics? 100%. So let's be realistic with this. If someone's genuine and they just want to sell them, want to go to a new home, and they've got a pair of Mark IIs, Mark Vives, et cetera, you should be able to say, if they're a trustworthy seller, I want to have a look inside. You know, it takes two seconds to lift the platter off. It takes two seconds to remove the five screws on the plastic cover underneath. And you can see if anything has been tampered with. You can tell if cable ties are original. So most people tend to put an aftermarket cable tie on. And if things are too clean or too good to be true, nine times out of ten, they are. There's a bullet point check sheet that I'm going to be creating that has different bullet points with things to actually look out for. Um, so if you were to go and view them, you could take your sheet with you and go, right, how does the arm track? What does the platter look like? There's things like even where people sand these down, if they're not very clean and they're very do dodgy, bad condition, people sand the edges of the platter dots down to make them really smooth and try and get the shine out. It doesn't really work. So they've got things where you can, you can tell if you've ever used the techniques what a platter feels like. But again, if you've never used it, how are you going to know? So the platters will feel different. You'll have aftermarket cables on the majority of them. Again, people don't realize when they buy these decks, someone could say, I've just changed the cables on them. But again, it's very, very easy to tell in this particular check sheet what I've created that you can tell by looking at these decks to view them. Um, everyone's under this illusion that you should plug them in, check the strobe dots for the pitch. That's not really the most important thing to be checking. I mean, just because your 6.4 doesn't line up doesn't mean it's not an original unit. You right, don't know right. until you rip into them. So you need to, the most important thing is platter off, looking at the boards, making sure the shades of the boards between the fuse board and the main board match. That's really important. Making sure there's no solder around two terminals. So basically, there's a fuse board and the main board. They go between two cables and they're coiled around. There's no solder. 
most people when they remove main boards to do repair or they have a board that they can't repair they'll find one that actually has been fixed and they'll pop it in place but when you try to wind the coils back round, i'll show you on this board actually very quickly i'll show you on this one yeah give me an idea this is an identical one the same as what i've got here this is the other two i'm working on so on these boards here so you've got your fuse board power supply in your main board right these two points here you'll find that they're coiled around cables they put the cable on coil them around if they've changed the main board over you see the shade of these color boards between the brown color usually this is an old this is an older 90s turntable so if you put an m3d board in this for an example or a mark 5 board the color of the board is lighter so it'll be noticeably different to what the actual fuse board would be and you right. normally find that where these cables are so finely tuned around and then cable tied together most of these cables they either shortened down and physically soldered on none of these turntables from new were ever soldered onto these terminals do you know what i mean right, so literally right, they right, can be yeah. hand tightened on so what i'm trying to say is you can easily take that board out and replace it with any board that you want if you were going to sell this and your customer would be none the wiser because they're never going to take the cover or that platter off the top and they'll function exactly. exactly the same. The graphics themselves, if you look very carefully, these appear to have been screen printed. You can actually feel the graphics very, very similar to the Technics. And if you didn't really know what you were looking at, you wouldn't know that the font is slightly different on these and there's a gap distance between the K and the 5. That's the thing that is fascinating to me because I am a, yeah, I'm an experienced DJ. I've been using 1200s and 1210s for 30 years. So I know how it's supposed to feel, but I don't necessarily think before seeing your videos, I would have gone to buy a set and said, oh yeah, let's just get that cover off, you know, the top and have a look at the internals. I don't think I would have done that. And now I'm thinking that is actually probably quite an important thing to do. It's, even if you are an old school DJ who knows how a 1200 feels, you should still be taking a look under that cover. Like you say, it's like five screws, isn't it? To get that plastic cover off. It's no time at all yeah so that's worth doing 100 percent. and it's the main thing is that people are people are trying to sell these as a certain thing right that's where like the fraud aspect comes in is they're trying to fool you that this is an untouched stock turntable like that one there you've got with the wrap on it no one's gonna not you know that's clearly been modified and, and maintained or whatever else you're not trying to sell that as a brand new 1200 or 1210 so it's that that kind of deceit aspect of it that really got me thinking like I mean, the, the pair that you highlighted in particular, the top of the platter, the paint went right to the edge of the platter, right? And that one, that was pretty obvious that that would, that, to me, that would have rung some alarm bells. But not everyone's going to do such a bad job as that. Some people are going to do a better job. And unless you put it side by side, you're not going to know, right? I've had, I've had some really shocking ones. I mean, it's gone two ways with this. There's either been ones that have been so badly done that it's, it's, obvious that they're fake you know they've been resprayed or powder coated what happens when you have these powder coated is usually if you imagine they cover the they literally vapor blast or bead blast these decks completely so all the threads everything remove all of the paint back to its bare shelf and then underneath the turntable where you have this section underneath here the bottom of the power supply housing they literally they'll, they'll, they'll paint or coat the entire top and the underneath so if you like yours, for an example, you have them I in mean, the white and red ones that you've had now, yeah. right? They're powder coated, I think. So what happens yeah. is they'd be coated on the top and the bottom. So if you had them done in white, that bottom would be done in white as well. And where I'm getting at, so this deck here being a 1210 Mark II, so the genuine Mark II, apart from the wrap, nothing's been touched, right? The underneath of this, you can see a color difference between these. You see how it's yeah. obviously it's not super shiny. It's not a flat black. It's going to be rough and ready powder coat the whole thing will be shiny or smooth depending on what color or style you've had completed so again if someone's going to sell these as a genuine unit and it looks too clean on the top turn it upside down and look underneath because you'll see this section poking underneath so this one here for an example you can see underneath the bottle one oh, talking yeah, about yeah. So right, yeah, of course that sticks out yeah yeah so if it's if that's any other color you know, or a lighter colour than what you're looking at, then the chances are, or a darker colour, the chances are it's been powder coated or resprayed. It's as simple as that. That's a great tip as well. Absolutely fantastic. So you see these potentiometers. Basically, what you've got, screwdriver, I'll show you. Pitch and break. Okay. 
These are newer style potentiometers to adjust the pitch and adjust the brake range, okay? Older Mark IIs look like this. This board is from a Mark II. Power supply section with the fuse board is also from a Mark II. So this has literally been taken out of a Mark II turntable. The cabinet has been powder coated and this has been popped back in. No service work has been completed on this deck at all. And the same thing goes to this board. Um, again, either from a Mark II, a later Mark II, or an M3D. Brilliant. So anyone in the UK, make sure you're hitting up Jay if you want some you know, turntable maintenance or upgrades or refurbishing or whatever. And I implore you all, go and check out Jay's YouTube channel because he goes far more in depth on all of these things. It was very eye-opening for me and I found it absolutely, yeah, really expanding my knowledge in just a few hours of watching his videos. So yeah, Jay, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So there you go. A huge thank you to Jay for coming on and giving us a brief breakdown of this issue of the Franken deck, which seems to be getting worse out there in the market. Honestly, I was not aware of it myself until I saw his videos. It does make sense though. You know, these things are getting rarer, more scarce, hard to find parts for. And in that situation, there's always going to be some slightly shady people out there who want to try and take advantage of the demand for a certain product. And that really is kind of heartbreaking. Make sure you go and subscribe to his channel at Just Technics and make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the DJ City TV channel to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of Beat Source Tech. And let us know down in the comments below, is this something that you've come across in your life? Have you tried to buy a pair of used 1200s or 1210 somewhere and just thought maybe things are a little bit too good to be true or something's not quite sitting right with you? I'm really interested to know just how widespread this issue is. I'll see you next time.